um and you could just have fun i mean to the point where you can like joke with each other during the match or like you're almost trying to pop the other one uh at some point or something so um i remember uh at the royal rumble that we were both in um i think it was my only rumble actually (laughs) but (laughs) it was um, we had that little spot there where you slid in and because originally you want to slide in and fall on the other side no, 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 no. Well, that was what I would do in my matches individually. Okay. But for the Rumble, I remember, um, you know, you were so generous, but also wanted to work, you know, do something with me. Because, like, typically the Rumble entrance is, like, whoever comes in, comes in and, like, does a few things and then gets, like, shut down. And then the next person that comes in does a flurry of things and then gets, like, shut down. Um, but then I remember um, the, you had your idea was – because I think you were supposed to get eliminated by Jericho, Jericho COVID. And um, <laughs> I'll slip that one in there. Uh, and you said, why don't you slide in? I'll beat on you, beat on you, beat on you. Um, and then I'll slam you down, do the French tickler. And then when I go to pick you up, why don't you kick me? And then that'll stun me. And then Jericho will come and throw me out. Oh, and okay. and again, Jericho made a big stink about it and politicked to where I would, where it eliminated that little kick that I was going to give you. I was like, Jesus Christ, like, right. are you, you know, are you that insecure? He was a pain in the ass, man. Yeah. Oh, super, super pain in the ass, politic guy. Yeah. But like, baby face you in the back or like act whatever. But yeah, I, it was, you know. That was the fuck all that. Right. <laughs> you know, the elimination by Snitsky was legendary. I put it up there with Maven eliminating Taker. They're my two yeah. favorite Rumble eliminations. And, and you told me just, you got in trouble because of that too, right? I had big that time. as well. Yeah, big oh. time. Um, because like the Rumble was my favorite event as a kid, you know, like me too. Uh, grunt, yeah, you know, like to the point where, you know, when I would go to like my friend's house as a kid, we would, you know, it was like, if I had two or three friends over, we would each, you know, we'd, we'd basically write a list of 30 guys, but we'd each play like four or five, six different guys each. And we would, we would all get on like either like, my parents big bed or like on the trampoline and we do a little rumble where you get yeah like thrown off you get yeah. thrown off the bed or you right. get thrown off the trampoline and then you'd come back as like the next guy that you were on the list or something and it was just ridiculous you know but um so that was my favorite event you know I, like you said it was your favorite event i think it was a yeah. lot of people's favorite event yeah. um because it's just chaos and and the, the elimination the surprise, the surprise. Too. oh yeah. the surprise and like you know, it's just, um, and now I think that the surprises and I think that the elimination, like, that's one thing I will say. And thanks, James. Like, that's very cool of you to say that, like, my elimination stood out. But, like, going back to what Renee said, yeah, like, so I was super amped to be in the Rumble. And then, you know, nothing against Gene Snitsky, but I was like, like, man, it would be awesome to get, like, eliminated by Batista or, like, sean or like whatever and and you know gene uh this was after a lot of his his big push you know like he had done the like not my fault thing and the baby kicking and all that stuff yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. stuff that you could never do today right Uh, exactly and so i was like huh like i guess you know like they made this big deal about me winning this elimination cruiserweight match to earn a spot in the rumble and now i'm just kind of like this afterthought which i wasn't expecting a big i wasn't expecting a push or i wasn't expecting like well you know you should go in there and you'll be like diesel and you'll just start eliminating i wasn't expecting any of this shit you know but at the same time i was kind of like that's it like i just get in and get thrown like what so i thought well fuck you know like um Let's make this a, a memorable elimination. Yeah. And so I came up with that elimination where I got 
clotheslined and did the the shooter bump off the apron and they knew they knew exactly what i was going to do you know it wasn't like i was keeping it a secret or you know like how are you going to get eliminated oh i'm just gonna get thrown out like i'll just get you know uh, like it wasn't any of that i they specifically knew what i was going to do and uh and so i do the bump and I had no idea they were going to send the stretcher down there. Like that was all their call. I had no idea that they were going to replay it. Like, you know, six or seven times that was on them. That's all, you know, Kevin Dunn's call or whoever was back there. Um, so did I tell them to do all that? No, like that was just them doing it because it was that impressive. So then of course I get to the back and <clears throat> I hop off the stretcher and like, you know, that was fun. Uh, and Pat Patterson, bless his heart, you know, he was always um, such a wonderful soul. Like he was just one of the kindest people. Like if you ever wanted to uh, talk to anybody that you could trust for the most part, you know, cause like that word gets that it's hard to say that you could trust anybody a lot of times back then. But, um, but Pat was one of those guys that you knew that you could always get like a, an honest, genuine answer out of, and like a genuine response out of, even if you joke, you know, cause you joke a lot, but, but, uh, but I loved him. Like Pat Patterson was amazing. And, um, but I remember he came and he was like, Oh my God, like that was spectacular. Like that was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Oh my God. Like he was such a, he was, he was such a fan of that spot the elimination. And I remember, um, Michael Hayes, uh, Michael, can I watch you shower Hayes? Um, <laughs> <laughs> walking, walking to the walking bias. And, uh, and Pat was like, that was a, oh, Michael. Oh my God. Did you see that elimination? And Michael Hayes walking by. He's like, yeah, it was good. It was a little too good. He walked off, just pissed off. I was like, what the fuck? Um, and then he, you know, Shane walks by and he was like, oh, Shane, did you see that elimination? He's like, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. And he like walked off. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I thought, I thought the whole point of this was to like make everything spectacular and, you know, make this event the, the whole thing is based on as right. spectacular as possible. And I'm literally taking, um, a nothing little spot that y'all gave me thankful whatever and making it as spectacular as i can and and like i said pat was the only one that was truly really uh appreciative and and identified that for being what it was and um and now it's like every year the rumble comes along i get inundated with tweets and all this bullshit and it's like well you're, you're being highlighted again it's like oh, of course i am <laughs> like go cool, big surprise you know like by the very company that you know hated it and um you know i was off tv for like a while after that um because did they of make that. any because, type of like a uh, story out of it like no no they all. made it they 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 their thought was that i had gone into business for myself and oh. it, then that it took away from the other the other guys left in the match and that it took away from you know their eliminations and now when you look at you know i haven't i don't watch i don't watch any of that stuff um but you know you see bits and pieces and stuff like that like highlights and stuff right. and now it's like the thing to do like how can you come up with an original elimination and like how can you you know so you have guys doing like fucking like walking on their hands and like see that stuff on people's backs that. it's so stupid that it's so stupid thing. Oh, it's like it's so dumb yeah, i mean it's impressive. expected every year and uh, every year and now you have to like yeah, jump yeah. the shark you know and it's like well like yeah it's you know like let's try, let's do a trail of breadcrumbs as i come down the match and then i'll step on the breadcrumbs and then like my feet won't really touch the ground and like oh it's up. like shut the fuck up um right, right and like everyone's doing it you know everyone's coming right. up with some sort of gag and it's like let me jump onto like the audience's chair and then i'll step on like this lady's head and then i'll right. step on this small child's face but my feet still won't have touched the ground. like <laughs> come on you know what i mean like uh, yeah so like 
I wasn't trying to do any of that. I was just trying to do an elimination that stood out, you know, and yeah. and that wasn't just the standard like, like throw them over, because um, that's kind of what always stood out to me was like you know these these eliminations that came out of nowhere, and um, so yeah, it's kind of funny to see that it's something that they highlight now. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, at the time I got admonished for it quite a bit, um, which sucked, you know, it sucked. But 